So we're going to learn about perspective again today, and we're going to draw our names, and we're going to make them vanish to a one-point perspective, and we're going to use some guidelines and some basic shapes. And for materials, you can use any kind of pencil. I'm going to use a design ebony, kind of a more of a charcoal smear, and you want to use your thumb or your fingers. I'm going to use a cutout shape of a star and a cutout shape of a triangle, and I'm going to do some lettering for my initials, MW and make them recede to the distance. Um, just like previous lessons, start with a horizon line. In this case, you don't need a huge one because you're going to draw shapes in front of it. I'm just going to draw a very light horizon line to indicate uh, where my vanishing point will be. Place your vanishing point somewhere on your horizon line, preferably to the left or to the right, so that it looks like it's going more to the distance. I'm going to start with my initials and then add the shapes in. If you have shapes or stencils and you want to add them in, it's better usually to add them in afterwards so that they can be recessed or you can overlap them as a pattern. So anytime you do lettering, it's, it's good to use dots. The W dots would be the same, just going backwards. I'm going to use my slide ruler for the top of the W. The dot where the peak is. Bottom of the W. Let's make this come down a little farther here. Extra sides. Uh, I'm probably pressing down a little too hard. I'm going to have to come back and erase some of these uh, lines when I make things three-dimensional. Um, just for argument's sake, let's put my vanishing point a little farther down here. When you're looking at lettering and you're making it recede into the distance, you want to find your outermost edges because those are going to be the connection spots. Uh, for your vanishing point. Before I do that, I'm going to trace some basic shapes in here. I have the star from earlier. And it's okay to overlap a little bit because we haven't established any front and back yet. And we'll use this triangle as well. So I want my triangle to be in the back, obviously. You can tell because of its placement. And we can see that I put my new vanishing point down here. Um, next up, we want to use some guidelines. If you're comfortable, you don't have to use your ruler, but when you're first trying it, it's good to use a regular ruler. I'm going to use these as guidelines now. Um, this is kind of where I just take some intuition. I have a clear ruler. It's very easy for me to see this natural line and compare it to the next one. So I'm just going to lay it down as thick as I want my letter to be. Connect my guidelines. And just make sure it matches. This one matches the bottom of the letter so it goes a completely different direction. Okay. 
and do some cleaning up with your eraser. Like I said, I probably pushed down a little too hard. You don't have to push down really very hard at all. You can go back and thick everything in when you add some shadows. I'll show you that in a minute. And you can see where I pushed down too hard on this W. When you do that, you want to go back and really redefine the correct line. We add some shadow to it. Now the star is already sitting behind the other letters, so it's logical that we just make it recede. Uh, first I'm going to clean this up a little. And clean this up a little. And we'll come back in a minute when I've added some guidelines to the star. Okay, I've got some guidelines trimmed up a little. Now when you start to shade, make sure that you pick the same edges to shade every time so that you don't confuse yourself. I'm just doing the right edges of the letters now, picking places where my lines are dark, starting at the corners and working my way down. Like I said, a graphite pencil will work just fine. Anything that you have, push a little harder, the lighter the pencil. And I'll come back in a minute when I've gone and shaded all of my edges. Okay, so now I'm back. I've added a little bit of shading. I can really push this farther if I want or use colored pencils if I want to go in and start highlighting certain areas with yellow or some of the lighter colors that you could use. Um, go ahead and finish your exercise after you've tried a couple shapes and you've tried a couple letters. Practice on your name quite a bit when you're bored in school and doodling. And, of course, remember the important vocab terms that we reviewed today. We went through guidelines. And those were the little dot, dot, dot lines that led down to my vanishing point. Uh, we talked about the vanishing point again. Very important when you're drawing in perspective. We talked about how to stencil when I used a star here. Um, we talked about how to connect dots to form segments. And that's what I did originally when I was linking the letters of my name together. And if you can remember those basic rules, you'll get better with a little experience and take a little more time on your shading if you want some deep, intense uh, tones. Thank you.